Good afternoon, everyone. A couple of quick announcements. I've got some good news and some sad news. Um, on the good news side, a week from tomorrow, we will have the blessing of animals celebrating St. Francis. That'll be after the 1130 Mass, a week from tomorrow. The sad news is um, to let you know that our colleague, our former religious education uh, leader, Jude Fournier, has passed away. And we will be holding a memorial uh, mass, funeral mass, this coming Wednesday at 10 a.m. I'm sure many of you know who Jude, either personally or knew of him. He was here for several years as both youth director as well as social concerns director and most recently as our religious formation director. Again, that, that uh, uh, mass will be celebrated this Wednesday at 10 o'clock. In the meantime, please turn off your cell phones as we stand and celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, as today we celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We hear today Jesus calling all, on all of us, especially those of married couples, to always remember the calling of sacrifice, the calling to enter and come back into that original innocence and original love that God intended for all of us to have. And so let us together acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to enter into the most sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals. But none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man. And while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, a class, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. May the Lord bless us. Life shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Behold, Thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May the Lord bless us all the children. 
children's children, peace be upon Israel. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and through whom all things exist in bringing many children to glory should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He, he who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made the male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child 
will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. You know, when I first flipped my lectionary to this week, I quickly realized why so many priest friends of mine decided to attend retreats and conference or go on pilgrimage, and why it's so hard to find a priest to replace you this week. the much dreaded divorce readings. I think this weekend might lend itself to having a married person like Deacon here to offer this homily. But instead, it just happened to fall on me to stand before you as a celibate priest to attest to the importance of marriage. And so with that said, it is unmistakable in the scriptures this weekend that God wants us to be able to experience faithfulness and love. Not the kind that comes and goes, but the steadfast and unfailing love that he intended for man through the vocation of marriage. We just heard from Genesis and re-quoted by Jesus in the Gospel that from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. God ordained marriage from the beginning and so the institution of matrimony is not a mere human invention. But our Creator gave it to us, and He embedded it in our nature. Marriage is a natural means by which a man and, and a woman find lifelong companionship, happiness, and love. As they begin a new family, their marriage is also the means through which God brings new life into the world. And so marriage and family are intimately united from the start. But I want to call your attention to the description of this relationship of Adam and Eve. Notice how in Genesis, God said that he does not desire that the man to be alone, but for a helper fit for him. There was everything in the Garden of Eden. Everything was there, but there was nothing fit for the man. And so God brought forth Eve. Pope St. John Paul II, in his Theology of the Body, said about this in this way. He said, imagine for a second that Adam there in the garden, everything was given to him. All creatures was presented to him. What must have seemed to be endless? Water buffaloes after water buffalo, birds after birds, fish after fish. But that something was still missing. Something made him still long for love. And at that moment, there, he saw Eve. 
And there he looked upon her. And this look is not a look of lust, not a look of domination, not a look of possession, but simply a gaze of awe, a gaze of original innocence, a gaze of love. And so at that moment, he cried out, This is it. This is the one that made me complete. This is the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Adam doesn't just tolerate this new being, this new person in his life. He doesn't just simply love her. But scripture said he clings to her. That word clings is used only when something is extremely valuable. It is essential for us, for our safety, for our lives, for our existence. So to cling to something signifies that one must let go of whatever the person has been holding on to previously. That's why God said, a man shall leave his father and mother and clings to his wife. This means that one needs to let go of whatever dearest to the individual lives. And so to form a new beginning. In a sense, it is the very image of Jesus himself who left his father's side for the sake of coming into the world to redeem us. Sacrifice was the motive of Jesus. It was his motive for coming to the earth. And the sacrifice is the binding basis of marriage where two people come together and spend the rest of their lives making sacrifice for one another in order to help one another reaching eternal salvation. And in saying that man and woman become one flesh, God is not speaking only of that physical union. No, but in the Hebrew understanding, Flesh means the entire person. Everything that belongs to that person. And so marriage is indeed the unity of two persons in their totality. God wants to move his primitive chosen community a bit closer to the ideal of mutual love and respect of woman and man, the respect for one another, to return us to that original innocence, to that original love that he intended for the creation of love. In marriage, one will be required to lay down one life, to give up or make sacrifice of oneself, especially for the sake of one another. To lay down that life as individuals and together finish as a new creation of love. But notice how God did not say, the two shall be one. But he said, the two shall become one. This signifies that marriage is not a static state, but it is an activity, a process that a husband and wife work in complementary to one another, so come to a more intimate union with each other. He did not say it was going to be easy. He did not say 
that it was forever a honeymoon. But he's saying that on that wedding day, when the man and woman exchange vows with one another, that's the starting point for a journey. A journey together, a journey to become one in heart and one in mind. To become one in direction and intention of life. To become one in family responsibilities. To become one in faith. And so bringing each other toward heaven. Jesus used this example of our first parents' marriage to underscore this challenging and radical teaching that the intentions of God for man and woman through marriage is like all of his teaching, is that we must go beyond just simply the letter of the old law. Jesus built upon that foundation of Moses and the old law and then give us a new commandment which lead to a perfection of life. For example, when Moses said, love your neighbor, what they often understood is to mean love your countrymen. But Jesus said to us, love your enemies. Or in another place, he said, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But he said to us, offer no resistance to the evil man. If someone strike you on the cheek, turn and offer him the other as well. In all of these examples, Jesus called his follower to go beyond the old law, to put on a new attitude, a new way, a challenging goal, a life and love as he himself did, a self-sacrificing love. He wants to take marriage to the level of the sacrament. He raised it to that level of that supernatural dimension as the permanence, as something God intended from the start. He wants to raise it and to build it upon love. Not only a romantic love, but one set of readings that many couples choose for the wedding masses are the reading of St. Paul. Where we are familiar with the words, love is kind. Love is gentle. Love is humble. It is not pompous. Well, for those who are married, I'm sure those words sound great on the wedding day. But as often, as two people live together, they learn that true love it's not just words spoken at the nuptial celebration. That love is not simply an emotion. But love must be a decision and a dedication. Where those words, for richer or poorer, for in sickness and in health, become so much more when it's personalized, when it become a part of life. When a wife will be kind to her husband, and the husband will be gentle with his wife. Or husband is humble with his wife, and a wife is not pompous, with her husband. The words are not as important in a marriage as the decision and the dedication that each party makes 
to put those words into actions and into life. I remember about two months after I was ordained, and one day I was in my office at the cathedral, and as I was walking out of the office to go over to the chapel to say daily mass, and as I just got out of the office, I saw this older man come stumbling up to me in his cane, and was visually angry about something. And his wife was slowly walking behind him and just kind of smiling, you know. And I immediately say, "Oh, oh, something is, is not right." And so he walk up to me and he go, "Father, father, can you tell her that Saint Paul said that the man is the head of the house?" But everything I said, she doesn't listen to me. And then he went on to complain. And I have to tell you, I don't know how I get these stuff. It must be the Holy Spirit, okay? And so I just look at him and I, I smile and I said, "Yes, you are correct." Saint Paul this said that the man is the head of the household. But did you know that the wife is the neck? And then it kind of shocked him, and so he just turned around and looked at her, and just frozen for about 20 seconds. And then he turned around and say, "That's a big pain in the neck." <laughs> and then she shoot right back, and she said, "To carry your big head." <laughs> and the two stroll off to mass. Okay, the two stroll off to mass. And then after mass, when I came out, the two kind of make up, but you know they're, they're walking side by side, but with still a space between them. And then so I walk up between them, and I acted like I'm holding her hand. And then he stop and turn around and look at me, then reach over and grab her hand from me. And so I jokingly said to him, I said. I thought you said she's a big pain in the neck, and then he just looked at me and said, "It's my pain and my neck. Go find your own." <laughs> and then two weeks after, they come to me and ask me to bless them on their sixtieth wedding anniversary. It's never easy. There's never be days without struggle, but God call us to always work through those trouble and see within it that we are one man for one another. To come back and reach that original innocent. The respect that we have for one another, and come back into that original love that God intended for all of us in marriage. And so I conclude by offering this prayer for all married people who are here today, and for all married couples who join us online. That may you find true happiness. As you walk this journey together, may you recognize the face of Jesus in each other. May you find the forgiveness of Jesus in one another. May you experience the self-sacrificing love of Jesus through one another, and may you grow every day. In your knowledge and love of God, and one another, may you help one another to become more holy, day by day, now, and always. Amen.
Now let us together stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial before things were made. Who's vine of and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. I am the Father. We go on again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, by baptism, we belong to Christ. May we always be conscious of the needs of others, and may others always recognize, recognize Christ within us. Let us come to Jesus as little children, and may he embrace the needs we place before him. For, ch for the children whom we are called to be through our, our baptism in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear. hear our prayer. For the children who experience war, shootings, abuse, bullying, and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear. hear. For the children who will now grow into adulthood due to abuse, violence, starvation, and incurable disease, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear. For the children who are orphaned, and for all those willing to adopt or foster children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. For the children we have known who have taught us lessons of God's love and joy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. For every baptized person, that they may be engaged in evangelization and available to the mission by being witnesses of life that has the flavor of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. For our community, for the comfort and healing of those who are sick and those who are suffering, for the strength and support of those who minister, for the safety of all healthcare workers, servicemen and women, police and first responders, and for all who are grieving, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For today's Mass intentions, for the intercessions of St. Jude, for the health of Isaac Montoya, and for the repose of the souls of Amy O'Brien, Ernie Maestas, Francis Grosser, and Jude Fournier, and for all who have died, that they may be embraced by the love of God in the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. For all the silent intentions of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, that they may learn to treasure the gift of matrimony, and they may learn to see Christ through one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you demanded that the little children have access to you as you announced that to, that to know the kingdom of God is to embrace it as a child. Make us childlike in our service of you this day. Help us to see that we discover God's love more easily when our hearts are not burdened with selfish pride. Who live and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as I prepare the altar.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O oh Lord, we pray, the sacrifice that instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostle and glorious martyrs, with St. John the 23rd, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at the passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May God bless you with every heavenly blessing. Make you always holy and pure in his sight, who are in abundance upon you the riches of his glory and teach you with the words of truth. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. In our life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.